Hey guys, welcome back to Shep Talk and welcome back to another Shep Talk movie review. But before we get into that movie review, a couple of admin notes. If you haven't done so already, please remember to like, share, and subscribe this video. It does help my channel out greatly and I do truly appreciate it. And I do have that second channel. It is Darth Shep Gaming where you can catch all my gaming VODs and all my playthroughs. So make sure you go over there right now and subscribe to that channel. Thank you guys very much. But let's get on to my review of Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Transformers Rise of the Beast was directed by Stephen Capel Jr. and was written by jo Joby Harold, Darnell Mateyer, Josh Peters, Eric Hober, and John Hober. And stars Anthony Ramos as Noah Diaz, Dominic Fishback as Elena Wallace, Ron Perlman as Optimus Primal, and Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime. Transformers has a runtime of 2 hours and 7 minutes. The Autobots believe they found a new way off of Earth to get back to their home planet of Cybertron, but they need the help of their new human allies as well as a new faction of Transformers called the Manimals. But to do so, they face a new evil that only not only threatens Earth, but Cybertron. Once again guys, you know me, I like to be upfront and honest and I am going to be that way with you. The Transformer movies for the longest time have not really done well in my opinion. I don't really like pretty much the majority of the Michael Bay Transformer movies. And sad to say I have not seen the new Bumblebee, I guess it's not even new anymore, the new Bumblebee movie. Um, which is sad, I know I should go back and watch it, and I will <laughs> eventually, but I just haven't done so. That's because really the Transformers main franchise has put such a sour taste in my mouth that I just don't want to, didn't want to watch them. And really Transformers Rise of the Beast for the majority of it when they when I first saw the trailer I was like yeah new Transformers movie I didn't even hear anything about it and I didn't even know if I really wanted to see this movie. Anthony Ramos is killing it man I first learned about him in In the Heights and his movie filmology is really good I think he's really talented I think he's killing it in these movie roles and I do believe he's one of those um, actors to watch because I think he's going to bring something to Hollywood as a new leading man and I gotta say even now in Transformers as Noah he definitely brings it to this character I really felt invested with this character I really felt attached to this character and it's good I think with the writers or what they did with him and with no with what Anthony did with Noah where we understand where he's coming from Noah is trying to do everything he can to make sure his brother is taken care of so when he meets the Autobots and agrees to join them it's not because he wants to join them or feels some you know like heroic need to join them it's because he wants to take care of his brother and he believes that the Autobots are a method to that end and then even when he does join the Autobots it's not completely a hundred percent to go along with Autobots he is there for his family and he's there to protect Earth because he's seeing that the enemies of the Autobots are very destructive and probably won't stop with the Autobots or Cybertron, they offer a greater threat to Earth as well, and he wants to do his best to protect them. On the other hand, Dominique as Elena, I just didn't really vibe with her. Like, I get the Brainiac part of it. I get she was the person that helped figure out where the part of the key was, so that way the Autobots and, you know, Noah could go to the next location to try to track down this place, or track down this key. There were times and moments where she just seemed slow or hesitant or just couldn't wrap her head around what was happening that because of her actions really dragged the scene out, dragged what was happening and gave, you know, the Terracons the chance to do what they needed to do or just seemed like it just, to me, it, she was a great as a brainiac and being that kind of nerdy person but and I get it right she's being thrust into this environment thrust into these scenarios that she has never faced before but at a certain point you know you got to get over that you have to move on you have to realize that you need to do what you need to do to not only you to survive but to help your planet survive help your your teammates survive and get over it because there's times when she does something and she's like yeah this and that or make some quirky statement stuff like that but I'm like it took you twice as long as it should have to do that because you know you hesitated you doubted yourself instead of just doing it um and I get it that's the character I just 
and that's the way she's written and I don't place it on the actor as much as you know how it was written it's just that it I just didn't vibe with her that well I embraced when she was in the lab and doing her research and tracking things down bet 100% great she did excellent in that it's just that when she started getting into the action part of it I think the action part was kind of weak on on her character's part and then I just mentioned the Terracons they are the we get three new bads on this one. Scourge, who is voiced by Peter Dinklage, and his two companions, Battle Trap, voiced by David so Sobolov, and Nightbird, voiced by Michaela J. Rodriguez. Um, when the Terracons are introduced, I loved them. These Terracons, these Transformers, were just so menacing, so horrific, that for the first time, we get to see some real threat to the Autobots, real threat to the Manimals. We get to see these these robots that just are unforgiving. They are killers, they are brutal, and they are fun to watch on screen. And we do get introduced into the Manimals in this movie. We have Optimus Primal, Air Razor, Rhinorex, and, Ch and Chitara. Um, this movie opens up with them showing us the Manimals and them protecting the Warp Key from the Terracons and having to give up and sacrifice their homeworld in order to hide and not let the Terracons get this key. Because if Terracons get this key, they're going to take it to their master, Unicron, who can then travel through time and space and devour any world he so chooses. But then, once that is done, the Manimals disappear for pretty much the next hour of this movie they come in after about halfway point or so and do form you know this team the Autobots and the humans to help take on the Terracons because now the Terracons have found the warp key and they're coming to take the other part of it and so if the animals don't help out the Autobots aren't going to be able to do anything and Unicron will destroy not only Earth but Cybertron and the Manimals will not be able to um, honor the oath that they gave to protect all the planets from Unicron. I should just start a movie section for my reviews because it seems recently that I've been talking about music and soundtrack from all these movies for the past month or so. And I'm going to keep doing it when a movie either does a really good job with the soundtrack or really sucks with the soundtrack. And I gotta say, Transformers Rise of the Beast do a phenomenal job with the soundtrack. I'm probably gonna buy this soundtrack too because this movie takes place in 1994 and really they bring back such nostalgia that, you know, there's certain songs in the 90s that when they play, just transport you back to the 90s, especially for us that grew up in the 90s. Uh, when we hear them, we uh, bet we know exactly what you're going for, what the vibe is, and Transformers kills it. Once again, like, I enjoyed the soundtrack to this. Like I said, I am probably going to buy the soundtrack to this movie because it just hit so hard while watching the Transformers on the big screen. Man, when I heard Unicron was going to be in this movie, my 1986 kid came out. Because that was the last time I got to see Unicron on the big screen was in the 1986 Transformers movie that any kid that watched that movie growing up got hit in the heart. If you don't know, I'm not going to try to spoil it. I'm not going to, I'm not here to talk about the 1986 movie, but go watch it if you haven't seen it. It definitely hits, especially if you're a Transformers fan. But man, Unicron is such a tease in this movie. I get it. He's a big bad. And really, with the way the Autobots were getting handled by the Terracons, they could not handle facing Unicron head on. Um, especially in the form that he is in right now, Unicron would just devastate them, so I understand it. But I kind of wish that we would get to have seen a little bit more interaction, if not between the, Uni uh, between the Autobots and Unicron, maybe the Terracons and, the, and Unicron. Just maybe give us a little bit more of Unicron. But I get it. But maybe this is also setting up for, you know, this movie or the sequel or something else where we get to see Futuron, the Autobots take on, and maybe even with the help of the Manimals, 
take on Unicron because he's still out there. You gotta stop him somehow. And now here comes my nitpicking part of this movie, I guess, or my what I did not like about this movie. Um, and they do this in like every Transformer movie. Stop writing the humans to be in situations where they're facing um, robots, small robots, secondary robots, I don't care what they are. Because you put them in a situation where you have to dumb down the robots and it just, it's, I get it, you're trying to do it for a comedic effect and it's worked on occasion. But every movie we see this where the big bad isn't going after, the Terracons aren't going after the humans. They send off their, their um, minions and for some reason, because they're really, they're small robots, their brain, supposedly their brains ain't big, though the brains of a, a robot or transformer in this day and age, the microchips aren't that, don't have to be that big. I don't understand it. They make them so dumb that it makes it for the humans to escape. Like, yeah, it's, we get suspense and stuff like that, but once again, it's, we see it over and over again. You give us these stupid robots for the humans to get away with, to put them in some type of danger, but we know they're not gonna, they're not gonna get any danger. So stop putting them in that situation. Just have, if you want the Autobots to face an enemy while the humans do something, do that. And then just think that the, the enemy is not paying attention to the humans because, you know, they think the humans are ins insignificant and they move on, you know, or the Autobots help the humans get away or something like that. But to put them in a situation time and time again, where you have to dumb down the robots or have some stupid MacGuffin device to get them out of the the scenario that they're in. Just it's just it's tiring to see. And even though this movie gives us three new bad guys that are menacing and terrifying, we get a generic finale. We get an army of gray robots that we've seen time and time again, especially in the Michael Bay movies, especially in the Marvel movies, where we get these faceless drones that we just don't really care about so that way you give the Manimals and the Autobots something to tear through while the big bads are doing their thing and until you can focus on the big bads and take them down or do whatever you need to do with them. It's just tiring and it was sad to see in this movie that for the most part was good to watch You gave us three new big bads. You gave us the manimals which had their own distinct flavor You gave us some new Autobots that we really enjoyed or had really good chemistry with you gave us some humans That we could actually relate with and then you give us a finale like that and I was like, oh Really did we need to go down this route if you really wanted to do a finale with more robots give the Terracons more there were more Terracons out there. You could have incorporated them in and had them, because they are so strong and powerful, fighting against Autobots and Manimals. And that would have been a good enough finale. You do not need to flood us with an army of robots. Again, it just it's generic. It's been done. And it feels just like you don't didn't know how to finish this movie. And one other critique about the finale was that you had the Terracons. These are robots that... The Autobots and even the Manimals at the beginning could not seem to take on head to head without getting their ass handed to them. And yet, supposedly, just I don't know why, in this finale with the humans, the Manimals, and the Autobots, I guess teamwork was the power that they needed to help defeat the Terracons and you know and win the day. And then the mid credit scene. Boy, oh boy, was this a big mid credit scene! A lot of people in my theater kind of exploded when we saw it. Um, what it means for future movies and another franchise. I can't wait. I'm very excited for it. Um, I'm not going to spoil it. Though it seems to be I've already spoiled on the, the the internet. Which I found very funny. It's like, man, I was talking to a friend on Saturday who hadn't even seen the movie. But he already knew what the spoiler was. And reading an article he showed me, it it called out. The spoiler, I'm like, man, without even saying like, hey, spoiler, don't read below if you don't want to know what happens at the end of Transformers. I was like, that is kind of messed up. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for the spoiler, or not for the spoiler, for the mid credit scene and what it means moving forward. Uh, I can't wait to see, see it happen, see it developed. But overall, guys, I felt really that Transformers Rise of the Beast moved the franchise in the right direction. I hope we get to see more like this. I hope we get to see more color though. I just, and I can see this, ha see it happening in this movie. This movie is giving us that. 
slowly but surely but i really want to see it more give us that more give us that paint schemes um and that way we don't have these gray fights that we just don't care about anymore um but man this movie was fun for me i'm not going to say it's not without flaws i'm not going to say it's perfect it is basically a summer back you know summer blockbuster movie it is that flash movie is nice action movie it's given us that autobots and terracons and manimals and given us what we wanted to see for a long long time um i thoroughly enjoyed it and with that being said shep talk gives transformers rise of the beasts three sheps out of five now have you guys seen transformers already i know i kind of posted this review kind of late let me know down in the comments down below what did you think did you like this new direction transformers is going did you not like this new direction um could you get over the michael bay films and enjoy the new ones let me know in the comments down below let's have that discussion but guys that is all i have time for today if you liked what you see here please remember to like share and subscribe it does help my channel out greatly and i do truly appreciate it but i'll see you guys in the next review